that others may live. That is the motto U.S. Air Force pararescue jumpers live for, train for, and sometimes die for. Part combat soldier, part doctor. There are no timeouts in a profession that measures success by living or dying. When one student turns up missing during pararescue training, Class 04 learns a hard lesson about consequences. The pipeline is two years of struggle and sacrifice, endurance and luck. Some will succeed, most will fail. There is only one rule for success, never quit. Trash is unacceptable in this room. Trash! Oh my god, there's all kinds of trash in your room. Yeah. Matter of fact, you're so proud of your trash that you actually piled it up in a box, didn't you? It is Friday okay, afternoon at the Pararescue Indoctrination yeah, School at Lackland Air Force oh Base, goodness, Texas. Class 04 is enduring a surprise barracks inspection by their instructor, Technical Sergeant Cherry. Oh my god! What in the hell is all this? What? You don't talk about room standards. Cherry's reactions leave no doubt that the class is about to suffer a lesson on the subject of consequences and attention to detail. Why didn't you two empty your trash this morning when you were supposed to? No excuse, Sergeant. There is no excuse! Cherry, he's all about following rules and regulations. I mean, down to the T and we paid for that as a team. We didn't keep our rooms up to standards, so that's, that's what got us in trouble. As lead instructor, Sergeant Cherry is responsible for training Class 04 during their 10 weeks of pararescue indoctrination training. 39 students have either quit or been dropped in the first four weeks. The 27 men who remain are realizing quickly that Sergeant Cherry's anger is not an act. He is convinced that 04 is not taking Indoc or his instruction seriously. Cherry is fed up. Kevin. Who we are, Sergeant? Who did you just talk to on the phone? Who we are, Sergeant? My wife. Your wife. Did you tell her that you are uh, unavailable this weekend? Who we are, Sergeant? She's at the airport, and I told her that. Pardon me? Who we are, Sergeant? She's on her way here, and I told her that. Well, good. She can go ahead and turn around and go home, wherever she's at. You're unavailable this weekend. Hi, how about Cherry's you? restrictions yeah, stun the class, particularly Cabot, who has planned his wife's visit for months. Loved one was it was for take. I would be too. My wife came right down. Here, you're going to have stuff in this career nice field that now, comes up, and you're going to have stuff yeah, planned, you and you're just not going to be able to do it. I don't know, you're just going to have to get used to it. If y'all want to get good and pissed off at the captain, so be it. Because you know what? By his actual failure to lead you guys. Sergeant Cherry's a very serious man. He's training us for a very serious business. Sergeant Cherry believes the failed room inspection is the fault of class leader Captain Frazier and his officers, who will now receive the brunt of Cherry's next volley. The plan was to uh, do a thorough... I'm not talking about the future, Captain, because guess what? Yours ain't looking too bright right now. There's a storm happening out there in San Antonio as we're, as we're speaking right now. I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about yesterday and the day before that. It's embarrassing. And all the things that you're going to soon regret. No one likes to have their failures pointed out, especially when you're quite aware of what the failure was. It's embarrassing. Guess what? Monday, I'm going to be making a phone call on your behalf, as well as Lieutenant Letterers and Lieutenant Pierce's, and I'm going to be asking for a reconsideration of your stay here. Yes, sir. A withdrawal of your orders here, as far as the combat rescue officer career field is concerned. Lieutenant Letterer. Yes, You're second in command here. You just earned yourself that buddy rope. Go get it and find a buddy right now. Yes, sir. It's in the classroom. He knows how to make us here. laugh. He knows how to make us cry. He knows how to make us pissed off and motivated. There's something you, funny to you, smart you, ass. Now what the hell are you smiling for? Guess what? He's your buddy. You are his buddy, Mr. Smiley. Something funny now, Ziggler? Thank you, son. With There's definitely a method to his madness. Sir. He's Mr. been in Smiley. this shit. He's seen it all. He knows it all. And he knows how to project that real world environment here at the course. And he does it just as good as anyone else could. He knows what it takes to be a PJ. And that's what it comes down to. You know what, guys? Your privileges are gone. You're not going anywhere. 
Okay? Nobody's coming to see you, Cabot. You guys are locked down to Medina Ann. Yes, sir. On your face! Give me two columns right down the middle here. Now, I want you the to lesson that we're trying to learn was the lesson that's embodied in the code. That's basically was at the core of the lesson that he was trying to get to us. Visual on it, and I want you to start right from there, where it says it. And I want you to read it to these men. Yes, sir. And I want you to have some feeling when you do it. Yes, sir. It's my duty as a pararrest to save life and aid the injured. I will be prepared at all times to perform my assigned duties quickly and efficiently, placing these duties before personal desires and comforts. These things I do that others may live. It says before personal desires and comforts, not so that you can play another game on the Xbox. By your action and your action alone, okay, you're their team leader. I can only do so much. Every one of you guys, look at your captain here, look at your team leader, all right? If he's failing you in any way, shape, or form, you're supposed to tell him! Are there any questions on that? Fall outside, right now. Sir. Give me the same formation. Oh, yeah, I never quit! Yeah, I never quit. Hurry it up! Team, tent, hot! Present! Oh! Early Sunday morning, Sergeant Cherry arrives at the barracks, intent on seeing for himself how Zero Four is handling the circumstances of their restriction. He's looking for more than clean rooms, however. Cherry is here to make sure the class is following his orders. Hey, why is there crash in the hallway, sir? That, that is trash, right? That is trash, sir. Someone didn't take it down, sir. Someone didn't take it down, huh? What you doing? You sleeping, right? Yes, sir. How come? Is this your trash, sir, Reese? Hey, you, you guys ready? might want to help your buddies out here before I start barking. Okay? Get your team out here. Adams is downstairs on the log, sir. Do you know what he's actually doing down there right now? He's sleeping, Captain. By the gun, what capped him? Him and Williams are both laying down in a sleeping bag. Are you aware of that? Negative, sir. Why not? Aren't you the leader? Yes, sir. Holy sh! All right, you're not moving fast enough. Listen up! Balls four, get in the hallway! Listen up for roll call. I want to see your face when I call your name. Heim! Move out, Sergeant. Sergeant Cherry came by for the uh, surprise accountability. Uh, at that time, got everyone out, went into Cabot's room, and found Cabot was gone. Michael W. Cabot, A1C. AWOL! No one knew where he was. Concretely, of course, we suspect, you know, that he's off with his wife. Oh, my goodness! Where's Cabot? Where's Cabot at? I don't know. Holy s***! We don't know where Cabot's at! When he came into the, the dorms at 6 in the morning, Cabot wasn't there. Did his wife come by? We've got an idea where he's at, obviously. There's nothing you can say. There's nothing you can do. He's AWOL. We're in charge of him. We're supposed to know where he's at all the time. There's no excuse for that. Go, go, go! How serious is the Cabot thing? It's missing. He's not authorized to leave Medina Annex, so the only other place I can think that he's going to be is over in the Chow Hall. If indeed he's not there, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the Commandant a certain tweeter a call, tell him that he's missing, that he's left the base, and see where it goes from there. What a beautiful morning! Airman Cabot! All all come free! Airman Cabot, come out to play! 
04 assembles outside the barracks as Sergeant Cherry searches for information on Cabot's whereabouts. The class will learn that the rules of INDOC and the Air Force are the same. The needs of the team outweigh the needs of an individual. Did anybody not hear me say that Airman, uh, Airman Cabot's wife did not come by? Your wife, did you tell her that you are uh, unavailable this weekend? We got Sergeant, she's on her way here, and I told her that. Well, good, she can go ahead and turn around and go home, wherever she's at. You're unavailable this weekend. You all heard it? Did anybody not hear it? One more time. Nobody's coming to see you, Cabot. So you all heard it. So I have 26 witnesses that heard me say, whoever's coming to see you tomorrow, why don't you just call them and actually tell them that that's all, OK? Why don't you tell them that? I'm going to be here for about another five minutes, OK? And if Cabot ain't here, well, then I'm going to go ahead and consider him AWOL, because I've already been here about a half hour plus. Yes, sir. Unless you can produce him in the next two minutes, he's AWOL. Yes, sir. Now, whether or not he's going to be eliminated for it or not, that's still to be determined. If we can't find Emma Cabot, and he's actually gone off Medina Annex, then it's going to be a more serious offense. The message to Zero Four is unmistakable. Have a good day. Teams succeed, individuals fail. It's up for roll call, Adams! It's Monday morning. Class Zero Four Thanks. begins week five with a three mile run under a 21 minute time limit. Travis Brown! The run will be the first event in a series of midterm evaluations for the week. Time! This is a go no go time for everyone. Airman Cabot. Kaiser. Go no go is simple. Failing one midterm, including a retest, will result in being dropped from class. Line it up. Cabot is back in class, but any resolution of his situation will have to wait. Cherry's first priority is for 04 to complete the morning run. He is concerned that any further attention to Cabot's AWOL at this point will divert the class focus away from their midterm evaluations. Cabot! Two, Sergeant! I'm not worried about the run. It's going to be hard. I've run 21-minute three-mile runs before. My big concern is pull-ups. You just failed! You're failing! I'm a little nervous, but uh, I'm being confident with myself. I'm just going to run as hard as I can and hopefully kick it in the butt. The course is really starting to scare me. The runs are starting to get me. My body is literally falling apart, and each event's getting harder. Okay. Last life, Sergeant. That's for sure. It's definitely going to be Airman Cabot's last lap. He'll be reporting into the uh, Commandant shortly after this. That's Yeah, why don't you run right there with him so you fail too, Shaw? The run finishes. Cabot far ahead of his teammates. Even as others fail to meet the time limit, Cabot knows his physical ability will be his ticket to graduating in doc. Jeremy Cabot might have come into this course with a little bit of attitude, and I think his team suffered for it. He knows what he needs to do to get through this course, he thinks, but he, what he doesn't know is he needs his team. As the class heads back to the schoolhouse, Cabot is flying high. You got the right to ride to Rockstead. But he is flying right into a situation where his physical abilities will mean nothing. Camp failure, I have here in front of me a letter of counseling. Listen up. It specifically addresses the failure to follow the general guidelines of the pararescue combat rescue officer policy book under team leader responsibilities. It reads as follows, sir. Cabot's actions are, are affecting the entire team. Once again, Sergeant Cherry believes this is the result of a failure in leadership. leadership. Captain you Frazier, he had some leadership problems, and they drew to a head this weekend. If you are unable to fulfill these duties as team leader, I will make the recommendation for your removal from team 04004 and possible elimination from the pararescue, combat rescue officer career field. Do you understand? I try to do the right thing. Captain, I need you to acknowledge that. The easy way. And doing the right thing is never easy. Airman Cabot, front and center! Right there! How you doing? Yeah, Sergeant. Good to see you back. Where you been? Yeah, Sergeant. San Antonio. San Antonio? Blackland Air Force Base. You've been on Lackland? Lackland Air Force Base. You've been over on the other side? 
Booyah, Sergeant. So you stepped off of Medina Annex, is that Booyah, correct? Sergeant. Even after I directed and ordered you to forgo having your wife come down here, as well as not to leave Medina Annex, you, you went and you disobeyed those? Yes, Sergeant, Sunday morning. You are hereby in violation of Article 91 in Uniform Code Military Justice by your willful failure to obey the order of a non-commissioned officer. That's me. Yeah. I specifically told you. I even called your name out, didn't I? Who yeah, Sergeant. You were specifically directed not to have any visitors this last weekend. You decided to go against this directive as well as you were missing during a team formation and accountability. Sunday morning. You are hereby released from training and removal from Team 04004 pending a formal review board where I will make the recommendation that you be eliminated from the pararescue career field. Go ahead, take that. You get to sign it, make any comments that you have on the back of this damn thing. Here's what you get to do now. You got 20 minutes to go over and get in your blues, report back in here to the Commandant. You are dismissed. You better have all your gear. Goodbye. You're heading the wrong direction. Yeah, you're gonna run now, aren't you? Prepare them out the bar. The class now moves inside the schoolhouse for their next midterm evaluation test, calisthenics. Cabot's situation aside, each student must focus on his own performance. Rodriguez has failed his run, but calisthenics are his strength and he passes easily. I'm not really worried because I can't be mad at myself if I give it 100% every day. But if I only give it 80%, then hey, I'll be mad at myself a lot. But if I give it 100, 110%, I can't be mad. Five seconds. <sighs> Reese struggles, but passes. Uh, recover, carry on. <laughs> Kaiser's day is going from bad to worse. He has failed his run, and now he's coming up short on pull-ups. Unless he can finish strong, he will fail cows. Kaiser is in trouble. By 9.30 a.m., with calisthenics completed, 04 reports to the pool for their 2,500-meter fin swim. However, roll call reveals their second loss of the day. Prescott! Preston! Reese! Rodriguez is no longer part of your team. He quit. I don't understand what happened to Airman Rodriguez. I actually gave him the opportunity when he was trying to self-eliminate to get on the bus. However, that was his decision, and it is heartbreaking to me to see someone that has the potential throw it away. Meanwhile, Cabot reports back to the schoolhouse, hopeful he can plead his case. I expected that they'd see someone who doesn't understand the severity of military orders and lifestyle and they would have some leniency. What we're doing right now is a formal investigation to find out what occurred this weekend. But Cabot will learn that being a pararescue jumper requires a responsibility to function in a team environment. Disobeying an order is a serious offense. This is not a situation where we're going to just say you made a mistake, don't do it again, which is kind of an an expectation that they sometime erroneously get. So that's yeah, the thing, the class, to show them, hey, we have a command requirement here, you have accountability to me, you have accountability to your fellow students, and you have accountability to this commander and the mission we're trying to serve. Back at the pool, the mission for Class 04 remains passing the 2,500 meter fin swim, and Sergeant Reese is falling behind. I worry a lot about my own performance. I'm gonna give everything I got, though. While Reese battles to pass his fin swim midterm, Cabot's situation weighs on everyone's mind. Captain Fraser, his officers, the whole class must face Cherry's questions regarding what they know and when did they know it. At any time while you were on log watch, sir, did you see Airman Cabot and his wife together? I was on log, log watch, sir. I'm gonna tell you right up front, you need to be very honest. Part of the integrity issue part of being, you know, Air Force core values is to know when you've messed up and to actually stand up to that. At any time during Reese, this weekend, Reese, did you see Air McCabot and his wife together, sir? Reese, no. At any time, did you witness 
Airman Cabot with his wife. One last time. Thank you, sir. You have rights. Okay, so you're going to initial off by all of these as your Article 31 rights. The half a dozen men that actually stated they saw you on a log watch while Airman Cabot and his wife were present. They're lying? Thank you, sir. Did you uh, at any time see Airman Cabot's wife with him? Yes, I did, sir. You did? Now, yes, sir. now you did? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, so is that an integrity violation? Yes, sir? It is, sir. Your status in the program is is in question at this point. Yes, sir. Okay, and I am. I want to gather all the facts and not act out of emotion. I want to weigh in everything: your performance, your your disciplinary actions, anything that occurred in the past. We'll, we'll take that into account. Bogo, last lap. As all the events of the morning come to a close, it is Reese who is now struggling to remain in class. The class roster is down to 25 men from the morning roll call, and Reese is falling behind. Unfortunately, the support of his teammates can't help him now. In the final minutes of his swim, Reese is on his own. Go, son, Reese! Pick, pick it up! Pick it up, son, Reese! Go, come on, Reese! Pick it up, son, Reese! Push it up! Pick it up! Right now, we got uh, Sergeant Reese, who's approximately a minute and 20 seconds over on his 25. 100 meter fin swim. He's got approximately five laps to go, and it's not looking good for him at this time. Great! Wide, powerful stroke! Wide, powerful! Go, go, go! Get off that wall and go! Get off the wall and go! As the training progresses and as the difficulty level rises, men will come up with excuses as to why they can't do something. Reese fails his swim now must pass a retest to remain in class. And if that means failure on a certain event, so be it. We'll make the determination as to whether they've met the standard of the course. Meeting the standards of pararescue training cannot always be measured by a time limit. By disobeying a direct order, Cabot involves his class leadership in the issue of command responsibility versus team loyalty. I know what happens. Leaders become very close to the people they lead and sometimes I think maybe we go hey go go take care of this it's the right thing to do she came down here and we'll cover for you unfortunately okay, so some of our, our leaders get into a conflict of interest that will haunt them later on they start to not see themselves as an extension of leadership which is what they're going to be but they see themselves as a great protector for their team so you know this is the evolution okay, so of teaching these guys how do you maintain your integration with the team and still be a leader? That's a unique challenge, and, and it will continue to be a challenge. If you want to claim these guys as your men, then you're responsible for them. Whether it's somebody being AWOL or somebody having bad shoes, either way, you're responsible for it. I see a breach of discipline. I see a breach of accountability. You guys, In my attempts to protect my team and myself, I compromise my integrity, spectacular failing for myself as an officer. I'm a better man than that. Captain Frazier receives a letter of admonishment, but remains in class. But Cabot's disobeying a direct order results in his immediate dismissal from pararescue training. The issue is that I disobeyed an order. It was such a hard decision, too, because the order that I broke um, was so personal. I didn't expect to be pushed out of the program at all. It was really hard for me to hold back a tear in front of the cadre there because I felt so disappointed in myself. It hurts because he's a good guy, but he made his decision. He kind of screwed the team over because we're having a rough time right now, but uh, you know, it's to each his own. He kind of like ratted out the captain and he screwed the team by not like telling somebody where it was. Yeah, Sergeant, good to see you. For what he did to the officers, what he did to the team and put us through, I'm glad he's not here. That was really hard for me to say. There's choices and there's being a team player. And Cabot wasn't a team player. He's learned some lessons about who he is, but the team didn't skip a heartbeat. I think they were ready to, to move on with or without him. As the team gets closer to graduation, they're going to be more focused for future challenges now after this week. The first day of week five has claimed two students, but Cabot's expulsion overshadows everything. With six weeks until graduation, 
Cavett's demise is a reminder that to become a pararescuman requires more than a physical effort. By Monday night, week five, class 04 is at a low point. Cavett, the strongest athlete, is gone from training, and the class is reeling under the fallout of his dismissal. In addition, Rodriguez has quit, and Staff Sergeant Reese, the top-ranking enlisted man, has failed his swim evaluation. Like a rudderless ship heading into a storm, 04 is adrift, their focus on passing midterms diverted. The turmoil surrounding them threatens to overshadow the priorities of week five, their most important week yet in pararescue in dock training. On Tuesday morning, the class roster grows smaller when Kaiser quits. I knew before I even got in the pool that I wanted to quit. Filled my eval yesterday. I uh, three pull-ups in 10 seconds of my run and just started thinking about everything else that I'm gonna have to do while I'm here. And this whole weekend I just kept thinking about it and kept telling myself quit thinking about it, but today is just a crappy day. Williams, go ahead. As always, once quitting begins, it feeds on itself. Williams is the next to go. William didn't ever show any emotions either. Five weeks he's been with it, man, he hasn't complained, hasn't had any problems. And the day I looked over and he's punching out, I'm like, man, what, what happened? You know, that came out of nowhere, same with Kaiser. Kaiser, in my opinion, I think he just got messed up about failing his eval and got it in his head that, you know, he didn't think he could do it and just gave up on himself. What are you doing, Bets? Bets. Just say it. Bets. I don't know what happened with Betts because he was doing good. Betts out of the pool. Betts, stand up. Come over here. Grab the horn. Betts, go! Betts, go! We cheer him on. No, don't do it. Don't do it. They blow that horn, and the only thing we can do at that moment is turn our backs and go on. You know? Betts quit today. It kind of hurt because that was one of my good friends. One's ready. Go! But. When we're at the pool, game on, you know. Can't let that bother you. Go, come on, Reese. Go! Zero four falls back on teamwork amid the commotion of people quitting. After four weeks, it is the only salvation for the 22 men left who have seen so many others give up. We've got the guys that are freaking out, and you try to boost their confidence level, but you can only carry somebody so far before it starts to not only bring you down, but it brings the team down. Although he failed his midterm swim yesterday, Reese is allowed to train with the class until his retest. However, Reese's self-confidence is now in question. Reese, he's been on the verge probably the whole time he's been. When things get tough, he starts to whine and complain. One, three, six, seven, <laughs> go! He'll actually get out of the pool, whine some more. Today, same thing. He got out, we had to finally given the failure to train. You already quit by actions. You already have a failure to train. Today? Hey, Reese, get over here. Today. Reese gets an FTT, or hey. failure to train, along with four other teammates. No matter how they take it, it's a bad day for 04. If the midterm evaluations on Thursday were held today, over half the class would probably fail. Go. We were 15 minutes over time, and I went ahead and pulled them all out, and I was like, that's it. All five of them, so. I just talked to Sergeant Cherry about it on the phone, and he's thinking possibly what happened with Cabot yesterday has got some of these guys shaking. So you're gonna see the rest starting to doubt themselves. Being counseled over a failure to train is a warning that continued poor performance could mean possible elimination from class. But instructors know that no one can predict who's going to make it and who isn't. And we're not asking you to perform to 100% every day. We're asking you guys to give 100%. Sergeant Reese, we want emotional guys. That's, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's, you can't let it control your body. You absolutely gotta turn it off. Grant. Yes, sir. When Reese takes his retest, he fails his final 1500 meter fin swim for the second time and has dropped from class 04. What's my time? 3148. For Reese, it is an agonizing defeat. 
Being set back means that he will have to start pararescue induct training over again from day one. This is just another chapter of the saga, trying to get in here. All I can do is keep my head up, keep my morale up, and keep fighting. We were going home, but we're not. But we're not. <laughs> so rock up and start up. We're going to have to make it happen. Thursday is the final midterm evaluation for water confidence training. Class 04 is surprisingly relaxed and confident, relieved that midterms are almost over. I want to pass these around. <laughs> Right here. <laughs> Pass these back to Ziegler. Ziegler, here we go. These are, these are straws, so we can all suck, suck it up. <laughs> so you guys get closer and closer as the numbers wind down, and that's that's what it's about. It's working as a team, you know. You can't expect to go through this course by yourself. It's been the worst day since yesterday. <laughs> Despite the loss of seven teammates since Monday, today the team is focused on passing the evaluation the first time and making it to the weekend. Buddy breathing is the only part that's got me kind of worried, but hopefully, like I said, it's two minutes. Hopefully I can just suck it up and stay down for two minutes. Got the butterflies just like everybody else. You know. Just hope today is gonna be the day that you manage to pull everything off instead of you know messing up on one thing. Then you gotta redo it tomorrow, so. But meeting the course standards involves performance, commitment, and luck. For Dykstra, his health has become an issue. After five weeks now, I'm pretty exhausted. My body's not recovering as well as I'd hoped it would. My strength is starting to drop. My numbers are going down. You got an eval? You can talk to Dr. Coleman right now, or you're going to quit. Those are your three options. He pulled me aside this morning, actually, and told me that He's really hurt, and I don't know if he was more asking my advice or warning me, but he did the same to a few other guys. Hopefully, he sticks around. Dykstra ended up having a medical condition that he did not want to push past and went ahead and was medically disqualified. However, will potentially come back and be successful here at Indoc. 25 meter underwater. Ready? The evaluations begin with a 25-meter underwater swim. All 19 students understand that a failure in any one event will mean a retest in all of them. Even after five weeks of practicing water confidence training in treading water, drown proofing, and the anxiety of buddy breathing, problems remain. Hein, Kramer, Kroll, McHugh, Patterson, Lieutenant Pierce, Jesse Brown did fail. <coughs> Body breathing. Yeah, over half the team failed that event. I'm disappointed. We had several guys that were actually a failure in buddy breathing. All we were doing was checking to make sure that they had uh, a presence on their partners as well as their snorkel and that they just stayed in the fight for two minutes. If I tell you to do something, you're supposed to do it. I'm a little bit upset for putting forth the effort and these guys not being able to succeed. Despite his irritation, Cherry also finds time to hand out congratulations. And it looks like everybody but Aaron Patterson passed. Even Ziegler passed. Yeah. 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 Good weight off my shoulders, you know. Now it's on to new and bigger and better things. You know, I've got another three weeks of, of hell here, and hopefully I can, you know, overcome whatever's, whatever's up ahead. So. This is a reevaluation for you. The next morning, it's retest time for 11 students in class 04 who failed buddy breathing. This is their last chance to pass the week five midterm water confidence evaluation. The class mood is serious. The 11 men seem focused, but INDOT remains unpredictable. The five weeks of training are about to take another turn. Brown, a solid performer up to now, stuns the team when he abruptly quits. Cam Frazier, rest of that team, get out here right now. Morris, right over there, Brown. Just didn't want it anymore, I guess. I want it, but I got a lot of things wrong with me. 
been feeling this way for a while now. I'm sorry, Brown, did you have something to say? Did you have something to say? <laughs> say again, I did not hear you. You're quick, great. Okay, go ahead and place the horn back there. Rest of you guys, 10 seconds. Anybody else have not feeling up to par for the next two, three years of your life? It was a little demoralizing. It was like, you know, how many more are we going to lose? How many is going to stay? Some of them you could kind of pick out, some you can't. Go! I tried to motivate as much as possible, but there's only so much you can do. Go! What happens on you know, like a really bad heinous day and you make it through the day and you know that that uh, water session is done? You shut out all the bad memories and just say, hey, we're here. We made it. We're a team. Let's go, yeah, way to go. Happy with you. Let's go. My dad says there's like three things that'll get you through everything. You gotta have a good sense of humor, just keep your mind focused, and just take it one day at a time, you know? Indoc has a saying that fear is temporary, regret is forever. There are 18 men left after the reevaluation is over, but only 17 will walk away from the go no go evaluation. Number high. You had a twisted mass trap. You failed this evaluation. Okay. Yes, sir. I have uh, certain tweeter, commandant standing by over there. He's offering you a setback at this time. Are you willing to accept that? Yes, sir. Okay. I know that sucks, but you're willing to take the Time's setback? Time's failure is the final hit for 04 in a week they will never forget. Everybody else passed mask and snorkel. Time is popular, and his setback is painful for both instructors and teammates alike. It was a failure of standards as far as the mask and snorkel event was concerned. Mask and snorkel, proper ascent. Second one right there, second yes, criteria. Sir. He was set back for it. Yes, However, with that heartache is going to come success. Yes, he knew that he had messed up, but he is starting a new class, and he's actually going to be successful there. I believe in you. I really do. I know you can become an outstanding pararescue. In the Marine Corps! In the Marine Corps! There are no peaches in the Marine Corps! With three weeks left until graduation, the 17 remaining members of Class 04 are taking no chances. They know that INDOC can be a trail of tears for those unwise enough to look too far into the future. With week five midterms behind them, the 17 students in 04 spend the next two weeks practicing new water skills, including underwater knot tying, gear recovery, and a 16-pound weight belt swim. But even with Indoc more than half over, failure is never far from anyone's mind. It's a mental game. You just have to slap the sign, who you are, and never quit. Where I never quit! Where I never quit! So every time you leave the building, you're thinking about quitting. Whether it be positive or negative, you're still thinking about it. Is my body going to push through it? Am I going to be good enough for it? You know, am I going to quit? Every guy you talk to that quits say that things just compound in their mind. They get excuses and they get reasons, and then quitting sounds better and better and better. It's an option for people. It's an easy way out. And then they do it, and they're like, oh, man, I was that close. I could have made it, you know? Whether Ziegler could have made it will never be known. On Thursday, week seven, he quits. Zero four takes another hit. It was really unfortunate to see Ziegler quit. I think that really shocked everybody. We were down to 17, and that was our family while we were here. And see him quit, it was devastating. I mean, we all got tears in our eyes. By the start of week eight, the class is down to 15 students. Zero four has lost 51 teammates, matching the indoc attrition rate of nearly 80%. But as the final exams begin, week eight promises to be as tough as ever. The first final eval is the 4,000 meter swim. Complete 40 laps under 80 minutes. I mean, obviously we had a calisthenic evaluation and six mile run beforehand. And I hadn't eaten as much as I usually do. Get to the pool, start the swim. Letterer ignores his early signs of fatigue and continues the swim. I think we get like maybe 10 or 12 laps into it. My legs start cramping up already. Should we pull him? I start thinking, oh crap, I'm gonna cramp up, I'm not gonna make it. Let's go! We're gonna have to finish this eval. Let's go, sir. Bam! Should we pull him? Don't use your arm. 
Letterer usually has no difficulties in the swim, so instructors begin observing every breath, every stroke, to determine if there is a problem. I, mean, I just remember Sergeant Twitter yelling at me like, you're uh, blah, 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 seconds behind, pick it up, pick it up. You know, I'm thinking, I'm trying, man, there's nothing else I can do. That's the last thing I remember. 34, 34. Pick it up. 36. Well, he stopped down there, they came out the wall and he actually literally did this. He did a full on stroke. And then right there in the middle of the pool, he did another stroke with his arm. Time to go. What he's really doing is he's wigging, big time. Letterer fails his time, but his behavior indicates he has a more serious problem. Stand up, sir. Okay? Look at me. Yes, sir. Take a deep breath through your nose. Get him out of the pool. Get out of the pool, sir. I don't know what was wrong with him. Right now. Captain and I pulled him out, got his booties off, got his fins off. It was like he was kind of passed out, but he wasn't. I knew right away that something was wrong, you know, pulling him against the wall. And he just, you know, pinpoint pupils, uh, rolling his tongue a lot. I was more concerned about him having heat stroke. And that's, you know, a true medical emergency. We're like, hey, we got to get this guy going. Relax, relax, okay? I had my arm behind him to keep his head from hitting the building. I've never felt somebody's neck so hot in my life. It was just unreal. Hey, leader! You're gonna stay sitting on the ground, hero. There you go. Great, great. Stay sitting on the ground. Stay on the ground. Uh-uh. Sit. Ready to rock. Letterer's condition seems to stabilize when suddenly it takes a turn for the worse. He became delirious and actually having delusional states. He became a little bit belligerent and actually hostile. He actually took a swing at me. I went ahead and just stabilized the situation, grabbed his hand, and started telling him, look, you better calm down or, you know, I'm going to take you down. What are you trying to do? Relax. Here we go. Relax. Hey, you gotta slow your breathing down, Alfie, all right? Seriously! Okay. Yeah. Relax. Breathe. Hey, take relax. a nice deep breath. Breathe. Yeah. Relax. Breathe. Okay. Just relax. relax. I got you. Relax. You're all right. You're all right. Hey, relax. 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 They try to eat real white, that way they can put out, but he's probably had like two gel packs. Uh, a quarter of the calories is extended. Letterer will be diagnosed as hypoglycemic and released back to class the next day, where he passes his 4,000 meter swim. For class 04, today is an indication of the week to come. You need to bring those hands close to your body and up, down, down. All right, you're coming. You're coming like a freestyle stroke over the top. All right, it's a failure. That's a failure. All right, unauthorized recovery stroke. Week eight is the final exam 04 has been preparing for since INDOC began. During this week, instructors make sure the 15 remaining students get every chance to pass their final pool evaluations on Friday. This was just something I decided to do. They got their final eval coming up Friday, and I wanted to give them some good time to practice. We were able to actually break down piece by piece what it is we were doing and let them see it from an outside point of view. And once they did that, I think they then could understand what it was we were doing to them and then for them to realize that it wasn't really as bad as it seems when they're in it. They are teaching us little hints and tricks of the trade to make it go quicker and smoother. And it's just giving us more confidence every time we do it. On the morning of the final pool evaluation, instructor Wirtis appears to be punishing 04 harshly. Recover! If I see your asses in that chaparral gym doing whatever the hell you want to, it'll be a smoke session every single day. You understand me? Who's your subject? 
His behavior stuns the other instructors. Evaluation days are not meant for reprimands. His fellow instructors are speechless, but Wirtis and the class will have the last laugh. Is anybody going to tell me that that's wrong? Yes. Thank you. I just played. <laughs> Sergeant Warriors is like, we're gonna play a little game, we're gonna play a little game. We all soaked ourselves with water bottles and we were looking at the instructor's face. And said, Why are they getting smoked before an eval? It was pretty funny actually. Hope they don't take it out us later. Really smoke it. The fun is over and the evals begin. Everything Class 04 has worked towards now comes down to one last test. Everybody, does anybody want to quit? There's no reason to not get in the water and persevere because you know you got to get in there and do it right one time. And if you do it right the first time, then we don't have to go back to the pool again. The class is focused. One event after another passes without fanfare. Go! Buddy breathing is always a problem, but the instructors immediately retest the failures who easily pass the second time, and the class moves on. Zero 04 seems to be having little problems with the finals. The class is doing well. Air the water and get ready for weight belt swim. The weight belt swim consists of swimming the recovery stroke for seven minutes wearing a 16 pound weight belt. The recovery stroke is similar to the side stroke, but any attempt by students to use a freestyle swim movement or to roll over on their backs will count as a failure. <laughs> Class 04 has lost 51 students in the last eight weeks. Patterson is in danger of becoming number 52. Come on, Patty! Let's go! Go through it! What should have happened in his situation was block out the pain, forget about the cramp, and press on with the mission. And he let that pain overcome him and was unable to complete the mission. Move out! Oh, man. Oh, my leg. Please, no. Please, no. Patterson fails his Patterson weight belt swim. For you. Please, no. Don't act like this. Don't start celebrating and partying, okay? Yet. Still got a long ways to go. Yeah, it's a joyous moment if you're over and done with here. Okay, but it's still a long road. So Final evals are over. Patterson passes his retest, and 04 graduates with a final class roster of 15 students. Indoc will last two more weeks, but the graduation is restrained. The instructors and the students are proud, but Indoc is only a means to an end. To earn the pararescue maroon beret, two more years in the pararescue pipeline will be required, and some of the most demanding training in the U.S. military. Every stop along the way, the guys are being constantly tested. Even though a guy graduates from here, he's not guaranteed that he's ever gonna put on that beret. For every pararescue student, Indoc teaches one rule for success, never quit. Come on. Oh, 